Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my thoughts on Samsung's Unpacked event for 2023. At 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, July 26th, live from Seoul, South Korea, we were introduced to the brand new Fold 5 Flip 5, along with a few new watches, and of course, the brand new Tab S9 line. So with that said, let's take a look and a listen uh, to what I think was a great job Engadget did to shrinking down at least the fold and I'll say flip portion of the event into less than two minutes. Introducing the Galaxy Z Fold 5. We designed an integrated hinge with a pivot shaft that moves the wing plate to create a larger curvature and it reduces the fold's gap to almost nothing. We call it the flex hinge. With a higher level of tension, our new hinge can be adjusted with extreme precision to get just the angle you want. Our new hinge still comes with an IPX8 rating for water resistance, providing protection for our lightest, most compact fold yet. This performance is anchored on the same leading technology as our flagship Galaxy S series, providing the most powerful processor on Galaxy foldables yet. The Galaxy Z Fold 5 delivers an epic camera experience with nitography, giving you the power to capture stunning clarity, even in low light. Shogo. What do you think? For the life maximizers, in pursuit of productivity, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 offers an immersive large screen that fits in your pocket. Equipped with top tier performance for multitasking and gaming and powerful camera capabilities, it redefines versatility. And for the free spirited style icons, the Galaxy Z Flip 5 is a pocket-sized powerhouse for self-expression. So I'm going to back this up because I feel like this is a perfect uh, you know, display that Samsung put together in order to demonstrate exactly what the new devices are made of, quite literally. So making sure that everyone can see this on screen. So let's just, I'm going to make this a little bit darker so it's a little clearer. And you will quickly get an idea. I'm also gonna play with the lighting here a bit. So basically what you're seeing here, and hopefully it is legible at this point, uh, is that we are getting essentially the same device that we had with the Fold 4, which is a fantastic phone, but if you follow my channel, you know I'm about to send mine back uh, to be assessed for repair. And that's another video at another time. But still an amazing phone, my favorite device ever made. And so you might say to yourself, well, this new one has the latest Snapdragon uh, CPU, and there is a really nice performance boost. You can see that right there. Uh, they're quoting 18% more performance than the Fold 4, 32% with the GPU. These are big gains. But what hasn't changed is that uh, essentially, we got the exact same cameras. We do have the benefit of better optimization from the new CPU-GPU combo. Uh, pricing stayed essentially the same. The displays stayed the same. However, they are much brighter. You can see the max brightness now, 1,750 nits. So we're getting the same principles of the S23 lineup, the flagship uh, that predates this in terms of essentially all the niceties from that moving over to this. But again, no new cameras, uh, no new form factor, although the hinge is really a big deal. I feel that a lot of people have looked at that hinge and said, this is all they're really putting together here in 2023. We've seen the evolution of the folding phone really only per Samsung, and they've done a really good job in spite of the fact that I'm now two years in a row having technical problems. I didn't have technical problems before that. Uh, but again, another video for another time. So really what it comes down to is that this new hinge gets closer, closer to what Google has already accomplished, as you can see right here, in their first generation with the Pixel Fold, which is giving us a pretty much seamless, nearly seamless, uh, flush finish. Now, they didn't accomplish that with this new device, but they got very close to that. And... Quite frankly, this is not a big deal for me. It doesn't bother me, but it does bother a lot of people. Similarly, that crease uh, that is still visible, it has not changed, also bothers a lot of people. I do not think that either of these issues are 
major, but if that is preventing someone from purchasing the phone, at least, again, that gap that does exist on previous generations will be pretty much just about eliminated, as I'm trying to bring that in focus to show you. But to me, the more important thing about the Hinge redesign, or I should say, uh, you know, innovation, is durability. And I say that because right now the problem I'm having with my Fold 4, I think has to do absolutely with the hinge and display cable uh, internally in the phone, all routed around near uh, thereabout of the SIM card slot. Not pretending to know about how, you know, it's deteriorated uh, to this point uh, without being damaged, but there's a reason they keep refining these parts. It's because Samsung is learning from their design and they do not make these discoveries public. I think you all know that. And this is not uh, something I'm bringing up to, this is not about conspiracies. It's about what every company goes through, R&D, and then bringing a product to market and learning from how it exists in the world. And while the main focus today was about how this was a fairly lackluster or underwhelming appearance for the Fold 5, because really for a lot of people, all they saw was a new hinge where the phone got nearly flat, uh, I think this could be, I'm hoping, a breakthrough in durab uh, durability, which is what they were citing in uh, the Unpacked event. So hopefully that's true, and they weren't going to say, well, we had to fix this because, well, the other phones are all falling apart. And I don't mean that literally, but hopefully you understand what I mean. So this could be big. Another thing I want to say is that, yes, the battery capacity stayed the same, but we should get better performance uh, through efficiency in the new uh, Qualcomm chip. Uh, and the same applies to all three cameras. Yes, we have the same cameras. I am not excusing any of this stuff. Uh, I, I think these things should be improved annually. Otherwise, it's tough to sell a new phone, right? It's tough to sell anything uh, on an annual basis without really improving it. And yes, brighter screens are great. Uh, the new hinge, I think, is being underestimated how important it is. Uh, and we did get a new S Pen, which is a step closer to maybe getting inside the phone again. Because any Note user from days past, like myself, misses having that included stylus here in uh, the Fold. In fact, it's one of the game-changing elements for the Fold, especially when aimed at something like the Pixel Fold, right? No pen uh, natively functions with this device. And that's a big drawback if, like me, you love the pen. Now that it's flat and about, it looks like half the size of the previous generation, we at least get a case where it seems to fit flush, which means we may only be another generation, fingers crossed, from getting a fold that has an S Pen built in. And I don't think it's right that Samsung continues to charge for the S Pen. A lot of people think the price should have come down. I would love to have a lower price, but what I can tell you is that the lack of competition and the fact that Apple still sells their one terabyte flagship most expensive phone for $1,600 is not going to persuade Samsung to lower prices on this device when it's simply unmatched in the market and outperforms the competition as well. As much as I like Google's first folding device, it does not compare thus far to what the Z Fold line can do as a daily driver. It's a refreshing, different device to use with a better front screen but I'm not buying a foldable device for its front screen. That doesn't mean I excuse poor performance on, a on the front display. Uh, it just means if I only care about the front display, I will get a candy bar phone. So I think that part of why we didn't get a big drop in price, aka none at all on the Fold 5, is that there really is still nothing competing with it. And obviously it is selling well enough that Samsung doesn't need to do more. Now, this is not great for us as consumers, but I'm not going to point my finger at Samsung and say, shame on you. It's really about the rest of the manufacturers, especially Apple, not coming to the table. And who knows when Apple will eventually get there. It could be 10 years down the road for all we know. Look at how long it took for OLEDs to become a thing. Um, so really, the improvement here, it's all minor stuff uh, and their refinements. And it would be easy to dismiss all of them, but I think, again, this is more indicative of the fact that Samsung owns this space. And until somebody shakes it up, it's going to stay that way. And if you really love having the Z Fold, you're going to continue to pay that price. And also, if you are in 
this unfortunate world of trading in your phone every single year, it's not a $2,000 phone, is it? You all know that. So only the people who don't upgrade in the you know bread and butter cycle for Sammy and Apple and every other manufacturer out there, uh, it, it comes down to that, really, ultimately, when it comes to uh, the real price of this phone. So if you're wondering if I ordered a uh, Fold 5, I did. I went with the half terabyte simply because I never filled my one terabyte uh, device. Now, that doesn't mean I don't still want a one terabyte device, but let's be real. Trade-in values aren't associated with which model you go with. And basically all this proved to me was that I didn't need the one terabyte device. And uh, quite frankly, with the trade-in value, uh, I didn't even trade in my Fold 4. Uh, I traded in the backup phone I just got, the Fold 3, which I got a great deal on and I needed it because if you watched my previous video, you already know I cannot go from a Fold back to a candy bar style phone. It's just not possible when you've done this for four years. You're you can't do it. It's it's a done deal. No way to go back. Uh, so with that out of the way, you get the idea, hopefully, that the Fold 5 will be the best folding phone on the market. Uh, I wish, like all of you, that they had bumped up battery capacity, given us new cameras, built-in S Pen would be nice. Uh, you know, it seems underwhelming, but if what this amounts to is that this phone is going to be more reliable and that's not to say previous models have been unreliable, but the fact that I'm buying Care Plus, <laughs> that tells you something when historically, I never did. And again, if you followed my coverage, you know why. So uh, I'm excited about the Fold 5 in spite of much of the internet taking a dump on this thing and deciding that uh, it's just not good enough. Uh, and, you know, wow, how is this what they showed up to the dance with when Google on their first run makes a really nice looking phone like this, right? Well, that's take in what I just said, a really nice looking phone. So I think Samsung knew what was coming and they weren't worried. And quite frankly, based on my experience so far, as I mentioned earlier, with the Pixel Fold, great first attempt, does a lot of things really well. It doesn't compete yet with what Samsung has. And the thing I haven't mentioned is that the Fold 5 got a lot of software improvements. The reason I'm not pointing to that is because until I get it in my hand, I can't tell you how much that will impact uh, the favorability of the device from my perspective and what many of you will end up thinking of it. So I don't think there's anything else from this video. I will go back to the slide. Um, to your performance from multitasking and gaming. <laughs> to, and I know I've spent the majority of my time discussing the Fold, but that's because I do think that is the device a lot of you are going to be trying to figure out whether or not it's right for you. And I think, I'm just trying to get that you slide, your device, which is giving me trouble trying to get back to the graphic for the Flip. And, you know, the Flip, a lot of people like to point to that and say, well, you know, they started high with the Flip. Let me get the whole graphic, shall the we? Galaxy Z Flip 5 is a pocket... They'll say, well, you know, we went to the point of uh, started out at what? I think 1500 and we've gotten down to 1000 And then here again with the trade-in, the deals are ridiculous. If this phone looks expensive, it's just because you don't know. With trade-ins, this is a two to $300 phone. Uh, and that's just staying current with flip uh, models and getting good deals on them, not at launch. Uh, again, everyone who knows this knows this, and it basically means that all said and done, you're probably $500, uh, six max out of pocket, and you're getting a new phone every single year that, again, is unmatched in the marketplace. Uh, the Flip 5, in many ways, is better than the Fold, not in my opinion, but obviously for the general market and broad adoption of a folding device because it's more compact, more fashionable, and just is a great phone with a large interior display, but this did get a facelift that was overdue. Now, granted, it's not the same one that Motorola gave to the Razer. I mean, that is what Samsung should be aiming at. That's where I can point to a competing device and say, you know, the Flip 5 has to step up its game because there is competition. Uh, but the new display front cover screen, 3.4 inches. That is a really big bump. I think it will make a very big difference in usability. I did order this phone as well. So a review is coming, even though again, no relationship with Samsung. Uh, I am excited for this. I think that 
now that this device seems to have matured, and yes, it also has the improved hinge, the same CPU, GPU performance, eight gigs of memory instead of the 12, uh, and you know, same battery, 3,700 milliamp hour. This is not going to break performance records, but in its form factor, it is totally unmatched other than, of course, uh, Motorola's product, and a lot of people aren't going to jump ship. Samsung does have a much bigger footprint in mobile devices and is just a more, uh, I would say, overall, a more complete uh, manufacturer when we're talking about software development. I mean, Motorola just, they make great devices, but their product and brand awareness is not in the same sphere. Uh, not anymore, at least. And I'm hoping that comeback happens. Uh, they are owned by Lenovo. For those of you unfamiliar, uh, Motorola you know, used to be uh, based out of the States. At any rate, I digress. So this is going to be an incredibly uh, popular device. Uh, there are so many different colors to choose from with the Fold 4. Uh, also, the most uh, in terms of options when it comes to color schemes that I've ever seen. Um, and I just think they did a nice job with the Flip 5. I think that the price is right. Again, when you put it in the context of what Apple sells devices for, this is a bargain. And that's without the trade-in value that I mentioned earlier. Same applies to the Fold if you want to really get technical. And those really are the only competing devices. I see the Flip and the Fold as designed purely to satisfy <clears throat> the power users uh, within Samsung Circle who want bleeding edge, and then to pull over Apple users who obviously don't have access to these kind of toys, right? Uh, maybe one day, but who knows when? Life is short. If you want cool stuff, sometimes you have to forget how much you, you know, brand loyalty means to you, uh, especially when things just work, and they do. Uh, we are not 10 years ago anymore. So I'm not going to talk too much about the flip beyond that because I think this phone doesn't really need an explanation beyond what I've already stated. Uh, this is just a great phone getting even better, uh, improved on in more ways uh, that are tangible because of that front screen uh, than the Fold. But both, I think, are still solid. Yes, I would have liked to have seen more from the Fold. I made that abundantly clear. Now, the Tab S9 line is expensive, and I guess we expected that. I, the question really becomes, how much did you actually expect it uh, to change? And again, the theme is the same. Uh, it didn't change that much. And that's unfortunate. Got to go through the ad, but I can at least lower this the through the process, if I could see. Uh, so what changed here? We got water resistance, finally. Something that I've been waiting for for. I don't know, roughly a decade, and I'm going to probably just keep this muted at this point. Uh, same CPU that you're seeing, of course, again, in the fold and flip. That's logical. This is the way they make money, right? Everything is pipelined. Um, same hardware, just a different presentation, essentially. Uh, better displays than the one you're looking at now, so I'm very excited to see that performance. Much brighter displays. Uh, they've even got a new name for it. I, that's not really important to me. Uh, that's what you're seeing on screen now. I want to see in-person performance. Uh, I was most reluctant, believe it or not, to order this, and I still haven't. I probably still will. Uh, essentially, the deal breaks down to me trading this in at a $650 value, and uh, I believe I'm looking at like $550 out the door. Now I say out the door because I would have purchased the keyboard case if it wasn't so egregious, but unfortunately folks, it still is. So let's play some of this. Uh, I don't know why Samsung is continuing to do this with the $350 price tag. It's insane. But really the main feature here with the ninth gen tab is that IP68 uh, rating. This thing could go swimming. Of course, still don't get it wet uh, in a saltwater pool or any pool for that matter. Chemicals will still kill this thing. But if it gets wet, you know, from drinking water, rain, you're fine. And that's really what it's all about. So could you take this poolside and it'll survive? Yes. So that's definitely appealing. Uh, can you take it to the beach? Yeah, that's a much bigger risk. But the whole point is, is that there is a little bit more safety than we've had in years past. And that is a big deal, uh, again, in the scope of tablets, because, you know, Sony was the last one to make a water resistant uh, tablet that I covered. And that had to be like 10 years ago. If it wasn't 10, it was nine years ago. And I miss those days because 
that was innovative. And the fact that we're getting it in 2023 for me is super underwhelming. And I don't say super very often, but it is. And I'm just glad they did it, but that wouldn't sell me on a new device. So yes, we do have the better CPU. We do have supposedly a better cooling system, which if you're familiar with the biggest problem with the Tab S8 line, especially the Ultra, we just didn't get full performance because of cooling, because of how thin the device is. So hopefully this makes a difference. They're claiming it does. So really this is about mostly performance. We get a new color, uh, beige for the first time. And yeah, I mean, do I expect this to change the way I use this tablet? No. Uh, does the promise of a better display mean a lot to me? Yes, because it's a tablet with a 14.6 inch display. If the display isn't good, not much else matters. That doesn't mean they can get away with selling us garbage on the inside. They're not. They're selling us top of the line, uh, you know, Qualcomm processors that do really cut the fat. We know that because their, you know, the last flagship device has been running on it for quite a while. So really what this boils down to is, I feel like right now from the outside, I don't see a reason for anyone to upgrade unless they really needed that water resistance and much brighter display, which of course is all a pitch to taking this thing outside and making it just more of a tool that you can actually take with you rather than a delicate flower that's going to get destroyed outside. So I think different strokes for different folks, some users, this is what you've been waiting for. Other people are going to be like, I've got the seventh generation. Uh, I'm happy with that. So, and I get it. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, you don't need to, if you're not missing features, you're not missing features. So that's how I feel about the tab line, even though I likely will end up uh, getting one and doing the trade-in because they're valuing this at 650, which is a tough pill to swallow, but still one that ultimately could be. Now, uh, the only devices I haven't talked about are the watches. And uh, quite frankly, it's another, it's much like the tab line. A lot of people are glad the bezel or rotating bezel is back uh, for the uh, watch classic. This is the sixth gen. I have last generation, uh, the 5 Pro with LTE, I do not see a reason to upgrade simply because for me, and again, this is all use case scenario, if you were waiting for a better looking watch, something that looks more like a watch, then you got it with the, you know, throwback to the classic with the rotating bezel. I think that's a win. However, I'm not looking for that. I have real watches when I want real watches. So it's a matter of personal preference. I also like that the 5 Pro still has the biggest battery. I don't want to worry about battery life. I know we've, you know, we've got a new processor in both watches along with more RAM, larger displays, depending on your wrist size. It's good that we've got more options. So I think that they're going in the right direction. Do I think it's going to do, uh, are there a lot of new features that are drawing me? No. So it's really more a matter of if you don't already have one and I can bring them up, uh, of course, just so that they're visible. Uh, but I personally don't see anything, there's not much of an appeal for me with the watches. That's, and that's because I've got the 5 Pro. You know, if you don't have a previous gen, I would say absolutely, these are worth looking at. Uh, and it's really just a matter of, do you want the sports watch, of course, or do you want the classic? That's what it comes down to. You know, one designed for working out, the other designed for going out, but can do both. Um, I think that I'm happy they brought back the rotating bezel. It was stupid to remove it. But again, I'm not sold on either of these because of what I presently own. But I think for anyone who's been waiting, you're going to be really happy with either of these. I personally uh, would be going with the classic. Even though I said I'm not looking for a watch, it doesn't need to look like a watch. I want the rotating bezel. So that's what that's about. And that's just a functional thing that I'm accustomed to from years of having it and not having it. Uh, was not fun. It's not. It doesn't destroy the experience, but it does take away from it. Uh, the new system you're seeing here, besides the bioactive sensors um, and the uh, skin temperature readings now, which we don't have in the previous generation, uh, you are getting now a seamless experience for removing the bands. I think that's a really important thing uh, because, of course, uh, they need to improve on that in every way they can. This is part of being competitive. But beyond that, uh, you're not going to see any major leap in terms of CPU uh, performance. Uh, you can control phones from 
uh, your watch now to take photos, which is definitely a good thing. That's something that Samsung was showing off. Uh, and software is important here. I mean, that is, whether anybody believes it or not, Samsung has become a master of this. And it's, it's funny to even hear myself saying that, but we are in 2023 and they have become really good at developing their own ecosystem inside Android. Um, unlike anybody else. And that's a reminder also when I'm using the Pixel Fold. You know, Android is beautiful in a vanilla form factor, but when you've used uh, devices like I have for so long and that maturation has gone on, oh, we want this screen. Sorry about that. That's when you realize how much you've given up in the process of, you know, basically leaving what you've been using for all those years. And so it's not even about familiarity. It's about literally losing functionality. You gain things too, don't get me wrong. That's, again, a video for another time, a comparison between the Pixel Fold and the Fold 4, and eventually, hopefully, the Fold 5, if I hold on to the uh, the Pixel Fold long enough. I'm giving it the full 30. So, uh, But you see it there. I mean, again, I mentioned the battery in my watch is significantly larger for a, a, at least a watch. So that's going to keep me there. The biggest gain... Uh, is really the brightness in the new displays. I mean, they're bigger, yes. Um, the bezels are smaller, that's great. But that 2000 peak is going to change it. Now, I don't find my watch difficult to read outside, but getting brighter is always going to be better. There's nothing to argue there. Uh, the one-click band that I mentioned before, this is really major. The fact that they are realizing not everyone has the same size wrist. So for me, uh, you know, I was forced into a larger watch with the 5 Pro. I wish I had two options uh, for that LTE model. They're waking up a little bit here. And that's because I think they're selling more devices. By the way, all of this, their ability for what many feel to sit on their hands is in large part, again, because they've gotten big enough, folks. They're good. Um, this isn't a good thing. Hopefully, you know, that changes through competition. Uh, but in the interim... I, this is where the game is at for me and for anyone else looking for bleeding edge hardware that we're not, we don't have a lot of options. And uh, please, no one start, you know, telling me about all the, the phones out of China that we can't even use here. So, or, or we, you know, another conversation for another time. But that rounds things out. I hope you enjoyed my recap, my thoughts. Of course, as I mentioned, I will be reviewing the Tab S9 Ultra specifically, uh, but it is great that you've got OLEDs across the entire line now, uh, the Fold 5, the Flip 5, and of course a uh, full review of the Pixel Fold is coming, as well as a comparison uh, to both the Fold 4 and Fold 5, because it, it, you know, is probably better to compare it to the Fold 4 than the 5. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe, and please stay safe. Later.